I was first starting out as a sommelier, one of the first wines that sort of like blew my mind that existed because it was so delicious and I'd never heard of it. And all the other Psalms were losing their minds over it because they're like, this is the best value in the wine world and nobody knows about it, it was Cru Beaujolais. And now, of course, today, Cru Beaujolais is a little more famous. It's gotten a little more expensive, but I think this is such a perfect example of a wine that's still really, really reasonably priced for all of the quality that it gives. And so the episode that we're corresponding with, with is all about Beaujolais because I feel like Beaujolais just still does not get the love that it deserves. Everyone thinks of Beaujolais as it being the cheap Beaujolais Nouveau, which by the way, we're going to talk about because there's some really good Nouveaus out there. But I think they still associate it with that. And this is very different. Cru Beaujolais is not made in the same way that Beaujolais Nouveau is. And for those of you who've never had Beaujolais Nouveau, you definitely need to tune into this episode because it's going to clue you in to something that happens every single year. You probably see it in your grocery store, in your wine shop, and you're like, what is this? Why is it so cheap? I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you all about it. And there's a lot of fun facts around it. But for what we're doing today, in this particular video, we are talking about Cru Beaujolais. Boom! 2021 Chateau Tivon Reverdon from Brie. This is chef's kiss, and it's chef's kiss for a few reasons. One, it's delicious. Two, one of the things that you should immediately notice about this wine is the fact that on the back of here, you'll see something really, really important. You see this right here? That is imported by Kermit Lynch Wine Merchant. So this is a Kermit Lynch import, and Kermit Lynch was really responsible for the Cru Beaujolais movement here in the United States. He was the one that years ago started championing these producers who decided that they were going to stop making Beaujolais in the way that it was traditionally made. So they were not going to be using the, the usual carbonic maceration, getting that sort of bubble gummy, banana, blueberry thing going. They were going to make it like a very serious wine. And they had these great vineyards. And so Kermit Lynch was really the first to start championing them by bringing them to the United States via his importation company and showcasing them. And since then, they've sort of blown up, right? You used to be get, able to get great Cru Beaujolais for 15, 20 bucks. And now, of course, they're a little more expensive than that. Although some of these are still very reasonably priced. And I think the Tivon is one of them. When we're talking about Beaujolais and we're talking about red Beaujolais, which is mostly all you're going to see. There is a little bit of white Beaujolais, but mostly it's just red. You're going to be talking about the Gamay grape, G-A-M-A-Y. If this is a grape you're not familiar with, it's okay. It's not out there uh, many places outside of Beaujolais. It's really mostly in this region, which is in the southern part of the Burgundy region in France. So Beaujolais is a place. They make lots of different wines, but mostly just wines in this style and the Beaujolais Nouveau style. And you're going to notice a few things. You know, I think one of which is going to be this is a little bit more transparent, right? You can kind of see underneath of it. So it's a lighter skinned grape. It's a lighter bodied wine. And then also... There's sort of a darkness to it, right? Gamay, you know, as much as it's a light-bodied wine sort of adjacent to Pinot Noir, there is a darker profile that I think Gamay usually has that Pinot typically doesn't. So let's taste. Mm, oh, this makes me so, so happy. I think one of the things that you're going to notice on here that I should definitely point out is you're getting a little bit of that like matchstick reduction, right? So you're getting a little bit of that like sulfuric thing. It's totally normal for a wine like this. So if you're not getting fruit on that first nose, don't worry. This is very normal. It will also start to dissipate, but I really love a little bit of that like sulfuric reduction on here. Because underneath of that, you're getting this like campfire sort of like this sort of dark, dark profile. Very, very red fruited, which is very different than what you would find normally with your your Beaujolais Nouveaux, right? Your Beaujolais Nouveaux are going to be very banana, very bubblegum, very blue fruited. But the way that this is made, which is, you know, more classically styled, so your fermentation is going to take place just like you would see any other wine, meaning it's not going to be in tank. And again, I encourage you to check out this episode because we're going to talk all about how that all goes down. But this particular wine is not going to be made with carbonic maceration in the way that Beaujolais Nouveau is. So it's going to retain some of those traditional Gamay profiles. I mean, it just tastes and smells like fall, right? It tastes and smells like this season. I'm sitting here looking out at the leaves on the ground. The weather is starting to chill. And it's, it's a light-bodied wine, but there's such intenseness 
in it as well. You've got all that sort of campfire, sort of hickory thing going, but it's light, it's dark, it's brambly, and it still has this like really refreshing lift to it. Do not be afraid to put this in the fridge and chill it down a bit. I think this is a wine that loves a little bit of a chill. And I know this entire shipment, as I've mentioned before, has been all about great holiday entertaining wines. And this is not an exception. This is a wine that I am definitely serving at Thanksgiving. This is wine that I'm serving all throughout the holidays as much as I can get my hands on because these wines do sell out really, really quickly. So just like the Sudero, I was super stoked to be able to have the Timon included in this shipment. This is a great, great quality producer. And if you're drinking this and you're like, wow, this like really reminds me of Pinot Noir, you are spot on. This is definitely a wine that I think in a lot of ways emulates the same things that we get out of Pinot in that it is structurally very, very similar, very soft tannins. The acidity is not quite as high as we normally get from Pinot Noir in the old world regions in France, but it does have all of those great sort of light characteristics, that lift, that brambliness, and then also, of course, the structure, right? This is a soft tannin super light bodied wine that still has great intensity. I'm drinking this out of my Gabrielle Goss Universal Wine Glass, but for those of you at home who don't have this glass, a burgundy glass is going to be the perfect glass for Gamay. Remember, the rule of thumb is to match your wine bottle with your glass. So you want the wider wine bottles, go with the wider wine glasses easy little rule of thumb to follow. Well, cheers to you all. I hope to see you all for the Beaujolais episode where we're going to talk about all things Beaujolais and how to drink it, what it is, how it's made. We're going to geek out a little bit and have a little fun. Cheers.